So, as the bromine nears the alkene, it feels the electron density in the pi bond, and we start to polarize that bond, and we make this end slightly negative, and this end slightly positive. And that enables the electrons of the pi bond to start to form a new covalent bond with the bromine atom. And we show that by means of a curly arrow, a double-headed curly arrow, moving a pair of electrons from between the carbon-carbon of the alkene to between the carbon bromine space or the space between the two atoms and we start to form a new covalent bond. So this will eventually cause the bromine-bromine bond to break and now having drawn all the bonds that are not breaking I can draw a new covalent bond between the carbon and the bromine. I have to put a pair of electrons and a negative charge on the bromide ion and what happens to the other carbon. So the other carbon atom has lost an electron and becomes a positive charge. Okay, That's what we call a carbocation. So now we've got to finish the reaction off and what we've got is we've got a bromide which is an anion and we've got the carbocation on the carbon, which are clearly going to be reacted, uh, so that are going to be attracted together. But the bromine, bromide iron, is also in our new parlance a nucleophile. We've looked at an electrophile. This is a nucleophile, which means it has a lone pair of electrons which it can use to form a new covalent bond. So the product then formed is the molecule with two bromines. So in this particular case it's 1,2-dibromoethane. And the reaction is complete. And the electrons have rearranged themselves. There's the same number of electrons as there were to start with. They've just ended up in different places. And this type of mechanism is called electrophilic addition.